Recently, I traveled to Light Elegance headquarters in Redmond, Oregon to meet up with my friend Jim McConnell, who is the chemist behind Light Elegance nail products. I literally love Jim. I admire him so much. He's one of the greatest chemists in our industry, and he's also a really nice guy, very smart and very easy to talk to. And I always find him to be a wealth of knowledge about nail education, especially gel nail products, and I just love picking his brain. So I traveled up there to do more awesome Chemist Corner videos with him. I know that some of you have watched the ones I did in the past about nail allergies and about UV nail lamps. And this time we are digging into what is gel? This is one of the biggest questions I get asked. And I came up with a list of questions that Jim and I did for a series of videos that are gonna be released on my channel. They're also gonna be released on Light Elegance's channel on YouTube. So I definitely recommend you guys follow both of us. Chemist Corner is a really great series that Jim does on his channel and he's always covering really in-depth knowledge about gel nail products and everything that there is you know, behind them and all of the equipment that we use and all the chemistry behind everything that we use. And I just find that the more education you have about the product and the medium you're working with, the more successful you are, whether you are just starting out or you're a professional well-seasoned nail tech. So I hope you guys enjoy this first video of a very long series of videos that we did together. I can't wait for all of the different segments to release, but without further ado, here's the first one. Hi, this is Jim McConnell coming to you from Light Elegance Headquarters in Redmond, Oregon, and I have with me today Liz Morris. Hey guys. Nail Hub. Yeah. So what are we talking about today, Liz? All right, so I've definitely asked for a bazillion different videos and we've been able to do so much together. I'm so excited to do this one with you as well. One of the things that I wanted to clear up as a misconception is the conversation of what is gel? Have I been deceived myself all along? <laughs> well, when we talk about gel, to me, gel is a consistency, not an actual product. And so I feel like referencing just gel as a generic term causes some confusion in the industry as to what a gel is. And then when we actually start using other terms like polymers and resins, people get very confused about, well, is that still gel? Or are we still talking about the same thing? So I thought I'd utilize you to be able to explain all of this to everyone and really get down to what is gel? Why do we call it gel? And should we be calling it that? Well, gel refers to a viscosity range, right? And so if we go back in history, and I'm a history lover, you're a history lover. I do love history. So if we go back in history to the European style gels, they were all very viscous building style gels okay. in the gel range of viscosities. So it has morphed significantly since then. So we have European style gels, then we had USA style gels, which are thinner, more self-leveling, rapidly self-leveling self type formulations. And now we have gel polishes, which are so far outside the gel viscosity range that this more of a nail lacquer in a photopolymer type resin lens. Right. So rather than saying UV gels, what we're really referring to is photopolymers. Right, so we've got that as the head of our gel family tree. We thought it'd be really, you know, visually stimulating to see this all organized as if we were talking about a family tree of products within the family of gel. So rather than referring to gels as gels, we're gonna start calling them photopolymers. Or if you're telling me you hear the word gel, think photopolymer. Yep. Polymer not gelatinous type material, not a viscosity range, but when you hear the word gel referred to in nail products, it's actually a photopolymer. Yes. I think so photo sure. being light and then polymer forming a polymer. So in this case here, anytime something is exposed to light that has a photo initiator in it, yeah. it becomes a photopolymer. Absolutely. All right, so if that's the head of our family tree and building gels is kind of the original gangster OG of gels, how did we get all these other products and how do they relate to one another? So building gels is where history begins. Okay. In the photopolymer realm from four UV gels. Um, building gels themselves don't adhere all that well to the fingernail plate. And so as a result, some of the original companies that were in the market started base gels. So base gels would be a 
adhesion promoting building, not building gel, but a smoothing gel right. that has really good adhesion to the natural mat. Mm -hmm. Some of these resins that we can put into a base gel have great adhesion, but they're very expensive. Okay. So you don't want to put them into the building gels. Right. Because it, most of it is lost in the bulk. So you start out with a base gel, which gives you really good adhesion, and then you put the building gel on top of that. Makes sense. From the acrylic range, we also have primers. So primers are products that you can put onto the nail, that penetrate into the nail plate, that do or do not cure, but they're extremely thin in viscosity. So if we look at things in viscosity range, your primers are the thinnest ones. Okay. And then your base gels are your next thickest. And then your building gels. And then after that, you can create what all of that, create your structure. Yeah. Or your architecture, depending yeah. on what term you want to use. Then you can decorate it with gel polishes or art gels. All the fun, colorful stuff. Yeah. And then what's after that? Finishing. Finishing. So you have to put a finishing gel down. So something for a gloss or a matte finish. Right. And so within all of these categories, I mean, there's some relationships between them where there is a little bit of crossover. So as gels have evolved in the industry, we're starting to see products that actually are able to do two things at once, maybe a lot of different things at once. And so how do these kind of, you know, Venn diagram wise start to overlap a little bit for people who are wondering about those things that are kind of in between? Can you use my marker? Okay, so we could look at everything here as being in the photopolymer range. So all of those are photopolymers. And then primers, some of them are air dry. Right. And some of them are UV cured. Okay. Okay. So those UV cured ones have a slight overlap with the primers. So in this little region here, you have your photopolymer primers. Okay. That also act like a base coat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have our building gels. Some of our building gels are thinner in viscosity, more similar to a base gel. Right. And they might also have a little bit of that adhesion product in there, so it's a all-in-one type of base builder that we can use for those two objectives at the same time. Yeah, and usually with chemist corners, I don't plug my delegates very much. Mm -hmm. I just talk generally speaking. Yeah. But some people ask us, why did you call one step one step? So originally the one step formulation included an epoxy bonding resin in it. And it was a nice medium viscosity and it had a really nice gloss. And so we called it a one step product because literally put it on the nail and because it had the epoxy in there, it had really good adhesion to the natural yeah. nail. And the epoxy also gave it really good solid resistance, so it had a great plus. Uh, some countries in the U EU decided that they were not going to allow bisphenol A resins to be included in fingernail products. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we had to remove the epoxy resin acrylate and dacrylate from the one step. And when that happened, it no longer had very good adhesion to the natural nail. Decent adhesion, but not very good. Absolutely. Yep. So um, that would be something that one step would be served in that base gel range. Okay. And then we have our gel polishes. Some of them actually fill in in the building gel range. Right. Their viscosity is like, say, 50 to 75 or 80,000 centipoids. Mm -hmm. So a little bit in the same range as the one step gel. Okay. Okay, one step's 100,000 center points. So these are just slightly thinner right. than that. But they also hold that pigment really well, they hold that glitters very well. And so gel polishes in a pot fill in where that building gel can be. So you use less building gel and then fill it up a little bit and smooth it out with the color. Absolutely. And that's actually one of my favorite categories of products are those color gels and even glitter gels that can be used to build some of the structure as you're applying them because they do have that type of viscosity that allows you to create that shape, that architecture on the nail as you're applying them. Some people also like the color gels to just be a super thin coating. They like to do all of the architecture with a building product and then put just the color as a very, very thin coating at the end. But just so you guys are aware, there is kind of that, that give and take in between those two categories where some things do cross over into the other, the other area and you can start to build some structure with some of the color and glitter products that are out there, which is really cool. And we're seeing some of that with the, the gel polish hybrid systems mm -hmm. that are very opaque, but they do have opacity to them. Yep. They do have that color. So you can build them, you can do the structure with them, and they offer a really nice color. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah, so you have those, but some of them are thinner in viscosity. And as a result, they're outside that building gel range. Yeah. So this, this area here, 
There are some products that fill in between the building gel circle and the gel polish circle. Yep. Thicker viscosities, could be soak off, could be hard gel. Uh, and then we have our finishing gels. Mm -hmm. Finishing gels will range in viscosity. So we very, very thin. Yeah. Jeff to cure, like tack free or nearly tack free, offer really good gloves, but don't add a whole bunch of bulk and shaping to it. Yeah. So you have a few, like Super Shiny, right. and their Young Nails has a gloss that actually is thicker too, comes in a pot, mm -hmm. that will help finish off some of that shaping, smooth yeah. everything out, and really perfect the nail. Yeah, and I love top coats like that personally, because if you've got any little imperfections in your application up until that point, you can really utilize your finishing layer or your top coat layer to just put that perfect, perfect finish on the nail and fill in any of those little dips or anything that's on there, which is, it's a really nice added feature. It really is. Yeah. So even if you have, like if you're looking at the shape of that, you're looking down the barrel of that nail, and you see one's a little bit thinner than the one next to it, yep. what do you do? Add a little bit more top coat. A little slip layer, put a little dollop in there, let it shape itself out, and then zap it. Right? Yeah, it's awesome. It awesome, is. Awesome. So it gives you that flexibility to do a lot more with it. Yeah. And I love this, you know, this kind of overlap as well, because, you know, as nail technicians, we're under a lot of pressure to do services quickly and efficiently. And so being able to find products that now bridge the gap between certain things. And also, like we said, you know, you can use your finishing layers to really perfect the nail if you didn't get it quite right all the way up until that point. Rather than waste another 45 minutes reapplying your builder gel and finish filing again, you can actually use a lot of these other categories of products to continue to move through your service, make your service more efficient, not only from you know labor, but from time as well. So I love that you know with the advent of gels and how much they've evolved over the years, we have so many options when it comes to the products that are gonna make us the most successful behind the chair. Exactly. Yeah. So please doodle that in too. Yeah. So and obviously there's so many, so many variants in between all of this. I mean, the sky's the limit with no, and there, this this at least offers that ability to insert various upcoming gels that are going to be out in the market. Yeah. Those photopolymers that are going to change their worlds, worlds of nail technicians. Right. So, but they all fall at this point within this group. Of gels. Okay. These this this family tree right here. So we're talking about gel viscosity as an actual category. I mean, what really of this falls within the true gel viscosity grouping? Building gels. Okay. That's pretty much the gel viscosity that we're looking at. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I know that there are a couple of non-self-leveling gels that are in a gel polish range. We don't open up the container. They're non-self-leveling. They're definitely gelatinous in nature. Mm -hmm. So those can, but when you start applying them, they become thin. Right. So it's a, it's a self-adjusting viscosity on some of those. Right, right, right. It's a really cool technology. But yeah, that is interesting that, I mean, out of all of these different products, the only one that really falls under the gel category is building gels. Just building gels. Yeah. And Lovely then, little things that they are. I know, it's awesome. And then also on top of that, within all of these categories, we have options like soakable gels, non-soakable hard gels, I mean, can go down as far as, as all of that to really get down to different options we have with any within any of these categories, which is another layer of complexity. Yeah. So with like base gels, there are soak off base gels mm -hmm. and non soak off base gels. Yeah. So and the same thing with building gel polishes and finishing gels. Awesome. Usually the gel, the finishing gels, you don't want those to soak off too easily because sometimes they stain your leaves. Absolutely. So there's trade offs for all of that. Mm -hmm. So you gotta choose the system that works best for you. Very cool. Now, I've heard, you know, coming across the topic of gels out there in the marketplace, a lot of times, you know, beyond the word polymer, which I've come across, and I feel like, you know, we've done a very good job of trying to explain what polymers are, and so people are aware of, you know, gels are photopolymers. Um, why would people refer to gels as resins? So, anything that forms plastic is a resin. Okay. So some of our first resins were actually made from the sap of pine trees. Mm. Yeah. So if you have a scar in a pine tree and then the sap leaks out, then this over a period of time, it becomes hard. So because the, the turpentine that's in the sap evaporates out and leaves just the residue, that residue is plastic-like. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. that's pretty cool. Or if you want to talk about cellulosics. So cellulosics are if you take the pulp of a tree mm -hmm. and you digest that, it becomes plastic. 
Wow. Yeah. That's so amazing. yeah, it's 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 really kind of fun. So nitrocellulose, mm -hmm. you can digest that with nitric acid and it becomes nitrocellulose. And that is actually what needs to put film on. Oh wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Like movie film. Movie film. Wow, that's really, really cool. Yeah, you don't want that to happen in uh, like a movie like a, a fire in a theater. Yeah. 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 It becomes Highly flammable yeah. stuff. That's nasty. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Yeah. And so, then so if all if all gels contain resins, then why do we refer to some gels as resins when it's just one ingredient inside of there? So it, there are multiple different types of resins that go into it. So okay. if you're talking about a true gel, you're looking at, let's say, a building gel that's a true gel. So it's only photopolymers that go into it. Okay. This would, would be an example of a resin that's also used in, as a photopolymer resin. Okay. So if we add a photo initiator to this resin and expose it to the proper wavelength, it will cure up to a hard plastic. Wow. Um, but you can see it's very thick very viscous, very clear. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that would be used in a building gel, in a true gel, a 100% gel type system, not in a hybrid. Okay. This is called a copolymer. So you have acrylates or methacrylates in a, a liquid or a solution. That solution is then polymerized into the right conditions, and it forms these beads. So the beads are... Yeah. This is cool. Like small, little, clear plastic. Almost like water. little grains of sand. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And so you can dissolve that in a solvent and form nail polish. You can dissolve that in a solvent and then add a photopolymer type resin to it. Mm -hmm. Both are resins. Mm -hmm. Photopolymer resin, not reacted yet. This is a copolymer. It's been reacted. Right. And so you can combine those and then cure it. And the entire system becomes a solid piece of plastic. Right. And this solvent will evaporate over a period of time. Yeah. You can also take a copolymer, dissolve that in uh, more volatile water, and then you take that and you let it down with a little bit of uh, a photopolymer called like this, and then mix that up, throw the photo initiator in there, you can put pigments into it, and it becomes a soakable gel polish. Wow. Yeah. Or a non soakable gel polish. Yeah, depending on what you form it. Which liquor you use. Mm -hmm. And what longer is you used, dissolve that. Yeah. Now you gotta throw some over your shoulder. It's not so. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> okay, so um, that's the, the difference in resins. Yeah, that's really cool, and I think it's awesome that people, you know, for people to visually see what goes into the products that we're talking about and how resins play a role inside the formulas of these products. Yeah. And we're actually going to be getting into formulations and how you know the different choices in a formula affect the overall outcome of the product and the polymer that we're creating in our next part of this series about you know what is gel and what are resins and all of that stuff so stay tuned because we're going to revisit this topic and actually get down into the formulation part of it and how all of these different choices really change everything about the product we're creating we're going to dive into the deep end of resins awesome all right well we'll see you guys in part two part two thank you